I was there in 1979 as an apprentice. It was union. We made good wages. Life seemed to be almost perfect. The boom we prayed would go on forever. However, that was not the reality. We here at Pictures and Portraits will soon be debuting Media Lost, a new series looking at forgettable content and what history it holds. In this special preview, we'll be looking at your future, your choice, a message to Ontario construction workers and their families. This VHS was ad mail sent out by the Construction Trade Council of Ontario. It's a lovely piece of anti-conservative, pro-union propaganda that still consider propaganda, even when you agree with it. It was sent out ahead of the 1999 provincial election as a call to action against incumbent Premier Mike Harris. Hi, I'm Mike Harris. When you elected our government, we listened to you. We promised we'd lower your taxes to create good jobs, turn welfare into work, and protect our health care system. We didn't make these promises lightly. Harris was known for his common sense revolution, a platform that included cuts to public transit and health care, leading to hundreds of nurses losing their jobs and hospitals being closed. The workers featured in this video are the people I grew up around, who find their livelihood threatened by the rise of and preference for non-union construction firms in regards to government contracts. Now this is obviously Canadian, uh, extremely so, but the message is relevant to any industrialized nation. I'd love to be able to tell you that everything worked out, but Mike Harris won, by majority. And according to a 2015 study of the nearly 190,000 construction workers working in Toronto, only 34% of them are unionized. I hope you enjoy this relic, this warning of the dangers of privatization. If you do enjoy, please subscribe as later this month we'll be officially debuting Media Lost. Thanks for watching. If Mike Harris is re-elected, I do believe it would be a tragic downfall to the building trades and construction on the whole. The unions, as far as I'm concerned, will be gone. The health and safety and the job will be TDOV. Uh, more cutbacks, more anti-unionism. It will destroy our whole way of life, a life that we have fought 50 years for. It's going to be the same thing as what happened in Alberta. You know, you're going to work for nothing, or a lot, lot less. Now's the time to get involved. The 1999 election. It will be a pivotal event for construction families in Ontario. Many of us do not realize it yet, but our future jobs and wages depend on who forms the next government. Why? Because the Conservative Party is committed to bringing in new laws that will break our unions and destroy a number of our collective agreements. Good morning, Ontario, Building Trades Brothers and Sisters. Um, I bring you a warm welcome on behalf of the Building Trades Brothers and Sisters of Alberta, Canada. We don't have to guess what happens if they get a second term in office. Our brothers in Western Canada can tell us what will unfold. I was there in 1979 as an apprentice. It was union. We made good wages. Life seemed to be almost perfect. The boom we prayed would go on forever. However, that was not the reality. By 1984, Alberta tradesmen were locked out for 24, 25 hours. After that day, we were offered our jobs back at about eight bucks, seven bucks, depending on the trade division and their scales, different than it was the day before. In 1984, major employers and the Conservative government collaborated to terminate all construction union agreements in Alberta through a 25-hour lockout. Even now, in spite of the oil boom, many skilled tradesmen in Calgary are earning less than the union rate of 15 years ago. The money wasn't there. We didn't have any unions anymore. The thousands of contracts that we'd secured through a lifetime of achievement from our forefathers before us, was wiped out at the stroke of a pen. Well, it used to be a time when, uh, you know, all the work that was out there was primarily union. A job like this here, a uh, high-rise, would have been uh, virtually union, and wherever you saw one of those hammerhead cranes that you see back there, it all indicated it was a union job. Also in the 1980s, another Conservative government imposed a West Coast version of the Common Sense Revolution on British Columbia. This included labor law changes that crippled union rights. And then the government of the day basically started tilting the scales in favor of the non-union, giving them preference on uh, contracts and so forth. The government brought in new legislation which essentially allowed uh, union contractors to double breast as a term they use. They could, uh, after a couple of years of, of appearing not to be in the economy, come back under another name and carry on open shop. They got a toehold and uh, once they got established, once they developed a skilled workforce, uh, then they became a force to be reckoned with. Uh, the more jobs they did, the more expertise they got, the bigger the jobs they could take on. 
Work didn't go non-union overnight. It took several years to transform BC into an open shop province. The unions fought hard, but the conservative government of Bill Bennett prevailed, and today even major industrial projects are being built non-union. Uh, nowadays, uh, this is one of the few union jobs uh, out here, and it's only because it's union pension fund money that's building it. But if this was just an ordinary residential high-rise being built for the private sector, you can damn well bet that the carpenters, everybody on here would be non-union. 1985, uh, a philosophy was transported from the United States of America into Alberta, which was a stepping stone to all of Canada, and it was called Merit Shop Contractor Association. Merit Shop. Everybody's heard about it, and they've had their conferences here, but I don't think you people truly, nor do your members, have any real understanding of the animal that you're about to meet. In 1985, Merit Shop opened in Alberta. The place was devastated. They fed us small wages, no benefits. Now that doesn't sound to you like that's going to happen here. I can see it in some of your faces. But let me make perfectly clear this point. They wiped us out with the stroke of a pen in the 25-hour lockout. Is it possible Mr. Harris would do this if he gets the next government? I would hazard to say, yes, he's going to do it. The Harris government has already shown its anti-union intent. Bill 31 creates a new class of business, a non-construction employer, that will be exempt from all of our standard union agreements. If their primary activity is something else, like manufacturing, retail, or land development, they can apply to rip up any construction agreement they have. The Conservatives rammed Bill 31 through Queen's Park in three weeks, with no public hearings. Unfortunately, many of our members still don't believe that these kinds of things can happen in Ontario. After all, today at least, many of us are working. Hey, we were all working too. You know, I mean, with all the expo work and all that coming, uh, things were rolling along, there was tons of work. Uh, but we thought things were good. Like I say, when you're working, you're not worried about it. The thing is, that's when you should be worried. In 1998, the Ontario government introduced Bill 55. It would deregulate trade qualifications and apprenticeships. If Bill 55 came, came in, uh, the Apprenticeship Act would disappear completely. When I go up on the yard, I want to make sure the guy across from me is, is, is equally as, as informed and educated in, in the process as I am. It's a de-skilled industry and it's a place that's totally de-unionized. Uh, workers here in this city, I don't know about other areas, but many of them in the construction sector are literally working in third world conditions. Uh, they show up, uh, you know, duct tape on their boots, uh, no heated shacks. Uh, I've seen scaffolds falling over here, uh, knocking out transformers and crushing cars down below. Like, people are paying workers to learn on the job in a lot of situations. I'm not exaggerating. And uh, it's uh, the culture here in terms of skills and safety has diminished totally. And uh, I don't know if it's reversible. More danger! Harris got to go! I got uh, paperwork by a suitcase full regarding specialist reports and what have you. And yet, I yet to find one individual from the workman's composition or my member of parliament to even listen to me. Otto Varga is one of thousands of injured workers whose claims have been stalled for months and even years due to cutbacks at the compensation board by the Harris government. After three and a half years, I finally got a letter about uh, two months ago that we realized you were hurt, you must do something about it. A lot of uh, injured workers are forced to uh, uh, outright handouts and that bad word of, of uh, welfare and so on and so forth, and, and uh, that's unfortunate, but these were the people who uh, actually built this country. Over in the meadow where the stream runs blue lived an old mother fish and her... My children are uh, constantly always asking me, well, what do you think about this bill, or why are the, the caretakers out, or why are the teachers always fighting for what they want, or are they greedy, or... What is it? What is the problem? And it's hard for a, a, a parent, like, you know, first-time parent, to explain to a child what the, you know, repercussions of this Harris government is making on our society. So what do you say to them? <laughs> I say the best thing I can say to them in that we have to get uh, a new government in, in place. A friend of mine, that uh, she had a heart attack on a Thursday. She went on a hospital, she got a, she went on a hospital, they let her stay there till Monday morning, no room, nothing until she died in the hallway. Why people work all their life, and they do everything they have to do to make a living, to contribute to society, and then all of a sudden, you gotta die in the hallway. They said that they had no rooms available. 
I made sure I went up on the, on the hallway, I went up on the room, on the floors, see a lot of beds, a lot of room, empty. There was not enough staff, not enough nurses to, to, to assist these uh, sick people. Well, everybody thinks he's got a job because now they say, well, I get a tax rebate, uh, at least these guys give me a tax rebate, I put money in my pocket, and uh, people don't care, but they don't think about all the people that they fired before. They fired all these people, the nurses, the, the, and the school, and now they're rehiring back. But what is he going to do after the election if he wins again? What is he going to do? Is he going to fire everybody again? Can we believe him? I won't. When I was a young guy, this was an honorable trade. It was a good business. It was an ethical place. People worked together. There was a, there was a, there was a culture of doing things right and it was passed on from one generation to the next, and you could earn a good living, buy a car, go on a holiday, earn, a, you know, earn enough to buy a house. It was a given, you know, it wasn't that big a deal. Today, that's totally changed. In retrospect, looking back, I wish we could have changed the Bennett government back then, but that's the way it went, and it sure destroyed the tower crane industry in British Columbia anyway, because 90% of it's non-union now, and that's the way it's gonna go, and it's tough to get it back once it's gone. Ontario is getting the same thing coming at them right now. It won't be quite the same as Alberta because I'm going to hazard to say it's going to be worse. Just look to the future. Look at British Columbia right now today and just think, could it ever happen to you? We know it can happen to us if the Conservatives get a second term. How can we stop them? By getting involved in this election and using our votes carefully. People from all walks of life, nurses, teachers, firefighters and others, are supporting the candidate in each riding who has the best chance of defeating the Harris Conservatives. In some places, that will be the Liberal in others the NDP. Ask your union or phone this number to find out who it is in your riding. Then talk to your neighbors, family and friends about this election. Put up a sign, get involved in defending your future. Let's make every one of our votes really count. Vote constructively.